Well, good morning. I hope you woke up with the sunshine of Jesus in your heart this morning. We've been talking about prayer. Hopefully we can enrich and deepen our prayer life and enjoy just a little more fully that closer walk with God. Here's the question for today. <clears throat> Should prayers be short or long? I'll tell you why I ask this. As you probably know, I spent four decades teaching men and women how to become pastors at a Lutheran seminary, Pacific Lutheran Seminary in Berkeley, and we would worship together. And students preparing for the ministry would be given various assignments and worship, some of which might be to pray. And when the student got the microphone, oh, let me tell you that prayer would go on and on. We would thank God for the whole history of Israel. We would pray on behalf of every victim of injustice in the history of Western civilization and all around the globe today. And those prayers would go on and on. And I just imagine God in heaven listening to a prayer like this and getting up and going to refresh his Pete's coffee and come back and look at his watch and wonder, I wonder when the amen is coming. We know how to give long prayers. I sometimes worship in Methodist and uh, Presbyterian churches, and I actually lead worship in those churches. And the, they have their what's called the pastoral prayer. Comes right in the worship order, and the pastor is supposed to compose. It's best that the pastor write out the prayer, and it becomes a literary accomplishment. Now, we Lutherans don't have a pastoral prayer. We have the prayers of the people, but that can go on for a page and a half. Does Jesus like this idea? Well, believe it or not, Jesus says short prayers are better than long prayers. Can you believe it? I wrote a book because Jesus said that called, Are You Ready? Short Prayers. Page one. Got to put my glasses on when I pray or when I read the Bible. Matthew chapter six, verse seven. Jesus is talking and he says, When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Keep those prayers short. <laughs> well, here is my question. Jesus gives us the Lord's Prayer. Do you consider that a short prayer or a long prayer? I bet Jesus thought of it as a short prayer. <laughs> Nevertheless, I think there's pretty good reason for us during worship to lift up our heartfelt concerns for, yeah, all those people around the globe suffering injustice as well as those whom we love who are confronting challenges and to celebrate those whom we love who have just had victories. All those things I think belong in prayer and if it takes a little extra time, well I hope Jesus will have patience with us. Well in my book you can see the picture of some mountains there. Karen actually is the artist. And 
what I've done in this book is take experiences in the mountains, <laughs> mostly, not always, meditate on them, and then pray in response. And the prayer is a short collect. Remember a couple sessions ago we described the collect. Here's one about creation. Are you ready? Refresh that cup of coffee. God's probably refreshing Pete's French roast at the moment. It was August 5th, 1989. I was sitting on a granite stone on the northwest shore of Lillian Lake in the Ansel Adams Wilderness. Looking through the lodge pole pines and mountain hemlocks, I could see the rippled blue surface of one of the Sierra's more beautiful glacial, glacial lakes. The sun was shining brightly on the rocky crags of Madeira Peak and Sing Peak, both of which peak above the tree line and top out at over 10,500 feet. A chipmunk came out to look around, then hastily scampered into a hole. No sign of civilization assaulted my eye. To the ear there was but silence, with the occasional song of an insect and the rapping of a woodpecker. Brightness, peace, depth, beauty. The word creation came to mind. Creation is a word that connotes two things, the presence of God and the goodness of the natural world. And that world looked oh so very good to my eyes that day. Yet, that woodpecker pecks only to find and eat the insects whose buzz provides the song. One of those insects bit me while I was sleeping in my sleeping bag, inflicting pain. I slapped all over the place and used some foul language. That's not here in the book. The scampering chickmunk, which looks so cute, is in fact running for its very life. The small creature is helpless prey to hawks and rattlesnakes who are ever plotting the chipmunk's demise. The beauty of nature has a cancer that is constantly afflicting it with fear, cruelty, suffering, and death. In addition to the beauty of nature, the word creation may also apply to birth. Loving babies as I do, each newborn I rock in my arms is a marvel. I think a brief Datable time ago, this baby did not exist. Now it does. A cute, cuddly bundle of joy has entered existence. Isn't it beautiful? Yet the beauty of each baby's entry into creation cannot be hailed apart from the threat of tragedy. What disease or accident might snuff out the child's existence before maturity? What if the surrounding culture is prejudiced against this innocent one's race? How might poverty destroy his or her chance for fulfillment in life? Will our practice of poisoning our environment prevent this child from having posterity? Or might a thermonuclear war settle all of these matters ahead of time? I had not thought that day about coronavirus. Babies are new creations. With each new birth, we are reminded that God is not done yet. God continues to create. The Easter resurrection of Jesus comes to us as a promise that God will create life out of death. The beauty I experienced at Lake Lillian is a foretaste of the everlasting beauty that God has promised. One more thing. 
the mother who brought me from non-existence into existence had a name. It was Lillian. I look forward to the fulfillment of God's promise for still another new creation. Now comes the short prayer. And if you remember the five elements of a collect, see if you can pick them out. Let us pray. God of creation, who brought us and our world into existence, please continue to create and give us the eye to see the beauty of this creation as well as the one yet to come. Amen.